Aren't you glad you made it? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the St. James Show. I am your host, St. James. What is going on? Happy holidays, everybody. You have joined the Carnal Church sector of this YouTube and Facebook streets. Who would he have in it? What's up, Inspire? Inspire is always ready willing and waiting to assist over here at the St. James Show. As you're coming in, please like, share, feel free to comment, and also join the St. James Show. You know what? Without further ado, I'm going to call, go ahead and bring on my co-host, Mr. Maybe, maybe not. How are you doing, St. James? <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> Man, I'm blessed. I'm so happy to see another Monday. Man, yes. I tell you, I had a rough weekend, man. I was, I'm still over here sipping on a ginger and mm -hmm. honey and, mm -hmm. but it's all right. It's like I had a kind of a, a, a two day kind of hit, like mm -hmm. a little cold or something. But, you know, that's after all the flu shots and everything. I told him, listen here, I had that flu shot, but I'm not getting stick, uh, stuck no more with none of them. Them, them 19 sticks. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't do it no more. I'm just got to pray. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I'm, I'm, I don't like needles at all. I'm going to have to just pray, man. And uh, so, what's up, everybody? Welcome, Eric Maurice Clark, to the show, Mr. Gospel Diaries himself. What's up, Sherrod? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. But uh, Deshaun, Alex, we appreciate each and every one of you coming in tonight. Man, we have a great topic tonight, huh? Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes, I think that this is one of those topics that's been uh, swept under the rug, and it needs to come to the forefront so that we can know that uh, history repeats itself, and uh, we need to just relax and just start embracing one another instead of, instead of you know, pointing the, the, the finger and, you know, uh, criticizing what each other is doing. We just need to embrace each other. So, yeah. It is so crazy. Like you said, history just repeats itself, and we keep having these same old arguments, these yeah. same old uh um, separations in church and it gets, I'm more saved than you are. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and as everybody, you can see that the, the title of this, the groaning gospel, hold on church. I'll be <laughs> right back. You know, so <laughs> we're going to just mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. And again, mm -hmm. if you are, um, not a subscriber of the St. James Show and Gospel Diaries. So, Inspire, can you uh, uh, get the uh, Gospel Diaries um, um, the, 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 the link and put it in the chat tonight as well? Because we want each and every one of you to subscribe to Gospel Diaries with Eric Maurice Clark. Let me tell you, you got some good <laughs> interviews over there. Thank you so much. Good gospel <laughs> history, right? All right? So both channels, we want you to make sure that you don't forget to like even when you look at his videos, put comments, subscribe for sure, share, 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 join the St. James Show, and always remember to donate. Again, for the St. James Show, if you are a member, we are giving away $50 Amazon gift card gift cards this month, month of December. So you want to become a member of the St. James Show. Our last broadcast, we had a few of you guys join, so we really appreciate that. So this month we'll be giving away just so showing some gratitude towards our members here at the St. James Show. Oh yes. Now we, it's just the season for giving, you know. Yes, it is. I mean, you know, we can't always just ask them and ask them and ask them to uh -huh. donate to our channels and 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 um support us. We gotta give something back every now and then, you know. Mm -hmm. And also we want to make sure that they, speaking of giving back and doing what you're supposed to do, um, Gospel Diaries right there. So, and that is the, um, if you want to support, there is the cash app as well to Gospel Diaries. And we'll be putting that up all during the night. So you have an opportunity to support, support, support. Now, when yes. we have this conversation, you don't see the member button. Where's my member button? I'm going to get this member button. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> they say they don't see it. I don't know why. It's sometimes it's like when you want to do the super chat, they mm -hmm. give an opportunity right there to do it. But then sometimes it it's not there. So I'm not too I'm not too sure about that. So, but let me get you all the link right now, just in case. Um, hold on, Eric. Bear yeah. with me. I'm gonna do some. I'm looking away because I'm gonna go ahead and share this on Facebook. Okay, great, great, yeah. Share, share, share. I was really shocked when you, while I'm getting this, I was kind of shocked that you, you, when we were talking about um, artists who have either grown up in church and have gone and did some mainstream, and we don't really say secular anymore. It's really more mainstream music. Mm -hmm. Um or artists who were mainstream and came back to church or did some flip-flop. They did some flip-flop stuff, which is flip-flopping it. What's up, JP? Flip-flopping ain't bad, right? No, right. it's not bad. It's okay. I mean, it's, gosh, music is a creative art. I don't care how you look at it. It's an entertainment, you know? Uh, we want to encourage through the music, so. There's the link to um, join right there. Um, there it is right there. And it's so funny how we're always talking about take the gospel to each nation, every nation. <laughs> <laughs> but don't take it over to those sinners over there. Right. But where the hell are we supposed to take it if we're not mm -hmm. taking it to the sinners? If we're not, mm -hmm. you know, making music that would attract the ones who aren't, you know, necessarily a so don't know who Jesus is or mm -hmm. associating with them. What are we supposed to be doing? Oh, thank you so much. He, see, we got some good saints over here. We got good saints over here. 
I appreciate you organically, Shanae. She does some good um vegan food as well. Thank oh, you so yes. much. Oh, yes. My yeah, brother I'll, loves vegan. Yeah, I'll pin that message. So if anybody wants to join, it's pinned in the chat. Now, you 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 put a name when you gave me a name. You put Ricky Dillard in there. Oh, yes. Absolutely. What does that have to do with in and out of gospel with Ricky Dillard? Well, it's a good thing, though, because we get uh, 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 a look at so many sides of Ricky Dillard. A lot of people think that he is uh, only gospel, you know, and but Ricky Dillard, you know, that dancing that we see him on the stage, all of that stage presence, you know, he was utilizing it in, in, the, in the house uh, circuit, you know. Um, he did an album. I think that album was in 88? One circa 88, 87, somewhere in there. And uh, he worked with, um, with a lot of those house music pioneers. And mm -hmm. then um, he actually, how New G got started, the um, uh, Union Baptist Church, Reverend Flint, out there in, uh, I believe that's Chicago Heights. Uh, he wanted to have a building fund, I believe, some type of um, fundraiser for the youth. And Ricky got the choir together. And then they did the uh, McDonald's competition. And then they won the contract with uh, Muscle Strolls uh, Records, and uh, the rest was history. But uh, yeah, Ricky was very much so into house music. Matter of fact, you remember that tune, Take Me High? Yeah, you remember that? Vanessa Mitchell? I the house know. track, that's Ricky Diller. That's no, that was cut in 1999. It's oh, funny that, and now that you say that, at his most recent recording, mm -hmm. he did, he recorded house, how, how did you say it? Uh, house, well, house, house gospel? Yeah, house music, it's house music. House music, but he said something else. He, he it, it was that, but it was funky. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly, because what happened was, okay, so like, well, you know, but the ending of the 70s going into the 80s, they had to bring a new uh, sound, and house music was that sound, you know what I mean? Right. And those people in Chicago, people like uh, Frankie Knuckles, uh, Rest in Peace, uh, J uh, Jesse Saunders, uh, so many of those house legends, Ricky was right there, I'm talking, and listen, if you listen to that record, he is straight encouraging on that record. You could, it's a lot of food for thought through his lyrics. And what's the name of the record? Uh, I would have to look it up. I, okay. Excuse me, right? I know. Um, uh, That'll be homework for everybody in the chat. Yeah. Uh, but he, he only did one, but he was featured on another track though, but he only did one full, full album though. Okay. They said he has a great singing voice. I, I oh, think, yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, so Sean says, uh, take me high gives life at the club. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you can't. Now, back in the day, you know how we think of uh, the Clark sisters. Mm -hmm. They said that I'm looking for a miracle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, went into mm -hmm. the clubs. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when we think of it now, okay, it went into the club because it has that, it had that Stevie Wonder beat, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was at, it was appealing too. It was contemporary. Yeah. Right, yeah. The, the Stevie Wonder beat, exactly like you said. Yeah, uh-huh. But I mm -hmm. think we get so caught up in thinking that that older gospel, it's like, how did that get into the club? And it's like, that's like these days. Let's not pick and choose what we put into the club. I say they, I say they uh, sample everybody's music in the club, mm -hmm. all the gospel music artists in the club. See, I, now you put it like this. So, okay, so the sweet cherry. Yeah, well, uh, you the brought the sunshine. There. That's what it was. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So you that's Odell, he gonna get it, he gonna get us together all night. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah, so the club opened in 63. Now there were stipulations though you know they didn't want a heavy uh they didn't want jesus used heavy in there but they still wanted to be authentic but they wanted it to be neutral music a lot of the people a lot of europeans uh that like got uh, aficionados they they're the same way they're a lot of neutral mm -hmm. so um when they so they tried it but uh, the House of Blues was opened in uh, 1992, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, they had a better successful run at it because they were able to express themselves more in a contemporary, traditional way. Because the gospel brunch is still going on. And yeah, like, I, yeah, that, they have yeah. drag shows that's doing gospel music. 
Lips before we get there, like before we get there, let's go back to what you were saying. Okay. Because we're gonna talk about the drag shows, y'all. <laughs> um, this this way right here, this sweet yeah. cherry. Yes. Now, was this the first um was this the first club or something or what? Exclusively for gospel. Exclusively for gospel. Okay. okay. Now in the 50s, you had people like um John Sellers, um uh, Bessie Griffin, that were going mm -hmm. in the clubs in LA, and you know, uh, John Stella was in the clubs in, in, in London. And so, you know, it was that was the only club that was the first of its kind. Then there was another club that opened right around that time that I believe it was called the Eighth Wonder. Okay. And uh, uh, I think the sweet inspirations, thank you, Tim Dillinger, uh, they sang at that club as well. So, yeah, that. Right there, that sign, right, that picture right there, is interesting to me because it wasn't it wasn't the evangelicals. It, right. <laughs> it was our skin people. It was you know it people was, like uh, Helga Jackson that yeah. actually raised fussed at that and said that 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 you know that gospel didn't belong with liquor. I mean, well, you know, if that's the case, you're basically saying that you don't supposed to commercialize gospel. But um, Helga Jackson, you have albums out, so you've been yeah. commercializing. You're commercializing it too when you go out because you're promoting it to sell records. And they were very well with her, very well to her. Uh, Columbia Records, uh -huh. oh my God, they took her all over the world. And uh, three albums were produced from the Sweet Chariot Club on Columbia Records. Prince James says, don't forget Jesse Sanders. I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He actually, He's credited for the first house track, the her first house track. I think it was only on and on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which one, right. Jesse Sanders or Tony Jesse, Jesse, yep. Jesse. And he's still alive, too. Shouts out to you, Jesse Saunders. You know, it's funny. Let's read what they said back in the day in regards to for th this particular picture, right? Mm -hmm. Is this what they were talking about? Um, Uh-oh. Let me just read it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that was the whole situation with Mahalia. And would you not believe um, so many publications had covered it? Like you had a couple um, the Billy Graham's magazine had covered it, mm. uh, the Christianity Today, you know, uh, so many people. And would you believe that that club opened in May? You know how long that club stayed open? How long? <laughs> not even six, four months. Wow. They have they read have, what they said, huh? They read what they said. They said oh, yeah. there have been furors uh -huh. about singing gospel in clubs, but it has never. And I hate the way they wrote back then. And uh -huh. it has never uh, publicly involved these artists. The biggest huff was exploded by Mahalia Jackson when the pop gospel they love that pop gospel yeah. movement was unleashed in New York in 1963, a nightclub euphemistically, uh, I think I said that right, called uh -huh. the Sweet Chariot, open in which hastily put together groups, sang songs, avoiding references to God or Jesus. Right. Waitresses were dressed as angels and drinks were served on tambourines. Now that's a hoot right there. <laughs> hey, look, the, and the, 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 um, the doormen, they were called choir boys. They wore robes. I Interesting. Yeah. Mm. So do you think it was now, do you think it, it that's kind of a mockery? You know, it's hard that old Eric Maurice Clark would have said yes. Okay. But new Eric Maurice Clark says no, because I love we have to learn to embrace people because I the old Eric Maurice Clark would have thought it was mockery because I was brought up in this culture. But mm. we have to realize that we live in a very diverse world. There's so many cultures. There are there are different ethnicities that probably will never in their life hear of gospel music. Never hear right. that. Right. So I wouldn't say that it's blasphemy. I wouldn't. I, I I would say just embrace. If you don't appreciate it, just don't. You yeah. know, don't feature it. You know, don't. We don't need the hateration because somebody's been inspired by it. Because it's just like that. I feel like this when I was younger. You know, I never. Uh, my mom used to buy mayonnaise, right? I thought that was the nastiest thing. <laughs> you know, when we would take road trips, you know, I was the only one that had bread and meat. <laughs> you didn't want no mayonnaise. Right. Yeah. So, but when I got older, I learned 
to tolerate a little right. mayonnaise. And that's what we have to do, you know, as human beings, learn how to tolerate people. If it's not your flavor, just, you know, just put it back in the refrigerator or don't yeah. even buy it. We yeah. don't show. Or even go go beyond and be a little bit more deep. Say, well, God, give them what I can't see them getting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, if, if they can get something, if they can get close to you by that experience, which I cannot, you know, if you really want to be that winner of souls like people right. be talking about they want to mm -hmm. be and where music is supposed to it's supposed to do. And so like Inspire says, so, so pop gospel, uh, came before Kirk Franklin. Yes, oh, it yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. And really, if you take from the term pop gospel, it's, it's simple. It's, it's basically popular music. So when when I hear pop gospel, the way I explain it, it's like, you know, Mahalia Jackson, those recordings on Columbia Record, that is not how we would have heard her in the Baptist church. Absolutely. You know, not. so they, 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 they created this sound that it was appeasable to a wider audience, you know what I mean? Because like still today, it's times I walk in the stores doing like, you know, the holiday season and I'll be, you know, just minding my own business and all of a sudden this voice out of nowhere. I'm like, that's my younger Jackson singing motherless child. I mean, just in the blend, in the mix of everything, you know, right, they have right. created this pop gospel, you know, and by her, you know, going against it, she really shouldn't have did that because we, we wouldn't even know about it today if they wasn't really trying to popularize that so sound. So Mahalia actually went against the, this whole pop gospel type Oh, God, of thing. yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, 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 that's a, and, and it's funny that you say that because we even had somebody else who had the gall, the audacity. <laughs> oh, James yeah. Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. And, they say, can gospel rock? And then James Cleveland said, no, but the mighty clouds of joy said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can. And, you know, the thing about it is, is that James, James had already crossed over. See, James is, 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 is massive. Like, he's outside of just this black gospel community because music aficionados, they study James. James right. has created a body of work that it would probably take thousands of years to probably just to analyze, you know, mm -hmm. it was just mm -hmm. that vast. And, you know, I don't really particularly, I don't like the way that he pointed the finger at the mighty clouds of joy because he had already, he's commercialized because remember, uh, what was it? 1976. He was in the studio with, um, with Ray Childs recording right. the album Porky and Bess, you know, exactly. but then this year, he was going at it with the mighty clouds and uh what's it uh, the manager of the clouds martin he said it's easy for james to say this because james is rich <laughs> you got that right and don't you know he's already <laughs> experienced on this platform and that from and getting money coming in uh, uh hand over fist mm -hmm. the question on the table is um ronald uh insanity says do you think that the davis sisters could have been considered pop gospel uh, to, I would say it's hard to really say because I don't have a statistics in front of me, you know, all of the, the numbers. But the Davis, it's hard because pop gospel is larger than our community. You know, and if you really understand that, you can't really compare it because right. that's like all over that's that's Evan Hawkins and stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, Davis, yeah, 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 yeah. They're in, they're overseas, but they're in a selected, you know, area, but the um, the um, Hawkins singers, I mean, you can, how dare you go overseas and not sing Happy Days? Yeah, Happy Days. they don't even want, they don't want to hear you. Okay, they'll do all your other, sing all your other songs, but that <laughs> climax mm -hmm. better be Oh Happy Day. When we yeah. went to, uh, when we went to uh, London with uh, uh, Donna Lawrence for the Music and Arts Global, I mean, we sung all of these are Donald's great songs and some Hawkins great songs, but it didn't turn up and you didn't see like everybody participating until we hit Oh Happy Day. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. You know, the 60s was a was a was an interesting decade for black culture, for African-American culture, because mm -hmm. so many things happened, because even in, the, in 1966, um, the Heavenly Tongue 
out of Ephesians with uh, Tremaine. Right. You know, there was a singer that was with them called Mary. Um, Mary, she married Leon Russell, uh, uh, Gentry McCrary. She married Gentry McCrary, but she went off and had a secular career. And Leon Russell, I, I'm I'm leading into something else. My mind is just going. Yeah, so Leon Russell is actually the one behind DJ Rogers going secular. <laughs> so and, and let's, all and let's let's visit that DJ Rogers. You know. Um, because he was in the church originally, right? Yes, yes, yes. Wasn't he like a minister, a pastor or something? Am I getting that off? Well, his his, his parents were past. He's a PK. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize that some, some folks may rather have houses and land. Some folks may, but I decided. But I, I decided to make Jesus my choice. That's DJ Rogers. Is it? That's him doing the narration at the end. Uh, that's Sharon which is Harrison Johnson's wife uh, doing the lead, but DJ Rogers did both recordings because they recorded it on Savoy in 69. And then when they signed a contract with Creed Nasbro, they re-recorded it and they Harrison Johnson wanted to revisit that sound. Uh, matter of fact, if I, if I can, I suggest you all, because that's, that's my heart. Would you all mm -hmm. go take a listen to uh, the Los Angeles Community Choir uh, I decided to make Jesus my choice and listen to DJ Ronnie. That's all amazing. That's an amazing tune. Right wow. And he also did All Right Now. It's kind oh, of yes. Yeah. All yeah. Right Now. That was a, that was an original mainstream secular song, right? Oh, yeah. That they made into gospel. Um, Hezekiah Wal Bishop Walker um, covered, well, he sampled it. Uh, okay. DJ okay. wrote that. If you listen to the lyrics, oh my God, it's it's. I so cool. was down. Yeah. To my last time. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. The the oh. DJ's version. He said. Uh, uh, what they was his version? Me, my, he they said they told me money grown trees. Wait. They told me money grown trees, but in my life I only pick weeds. It is already. It's so many. Like he's so profound in this. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I remember DJ swoped through California. I remember when he was here, he came up to my church in San Jose. He, I think he got us for uh, some thousands of dollars. And <laughs> <laughs> he was on a roll, boy. He was making all kind of stuff. Uh, Red Man uh, 197. A lot of them, to me, were protecting their songs and music, but the Dixie Hummingbirds were, made, were awesome and crossed many color barriers and types of music. They did. Yeah, they did, but they not. But unfortunately, groups like the, no matter how big they were, groups like the Dixie Hummingbirds, the Caravans, uh, a lot of those quartets, they just did not cross mainstream. They had great careers, right? They just right. did not get that 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 cross. I like what Sean says because Sean, she's walking in the book. Most secular artists are saved. I, I, listen. <laughs> And that is so the truth. I got tired of a pastor I used to be under. He used to get up there and, and he's, he was one of those Beyonce bands, bashers, mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey bashers. You know, they're not saved. Mm -hmm. They need Jesus, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, first of all, you don't know these people personally. And I know Beyonce grew up in Houston in that Baptist church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, I think... It's like when I, I first put, hold on, y'all. I'll be right back. I mean, I got to go and, and spread my wings. Yeah. And you you can't say that. They like to pick the, pick apart the bad lyrics in the mm -hmm. mainstream artists. Yeah. yeah. But they won't pick any good of the good lyrics or the, the lyrics talking about love, the lyrics talking about wealth and success. And they don't want to pick out any of those types of lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah. rams in the bush. There you go. <laughs> but before we go on, everybody, please continue. If you're coming in, please hit the like button. Don't forget to uh, comment and also share and subscribe to the St. James Show and to Gospel Diaries um, here on YouTube. And never forget to donate. All right. Thank you so much, so much. Um, let's see here. We got people like Kelly Price. Mm -hmm. Kelly Price, old Kojic girl. Yeah. Kelly, you know, her story is amazing. 
you know, she was privileged. Like, God, like to be on the road with Mariah Carey. Right, you know, right. And to be background vocalist on so many records. And, and she's a tremendous gift. I mean, that girl could flat foot sing, you know? Like, that's one thing that I think is so amazing about this phenomenon, gospel music. And why why should you want to keep that bottle? Why should you want to keep gospel music, you know, in a confining? You know, you should right, want to care right. because the same energy, the same joy that 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 floods your soul when you listen to this music you should want to you know share that experience with your fellow man you know and i don't you know the thing about it is too it's like so what yeah some people might come to the club or listen to shoot it's been times and i'll be honest it's been times that i've listened to gospel music and i ain't gonna say why because i'll be lying if i said why i've <laughs> had a full i've had a full out drink and right mm -hmm. and it, and it'll take you out well <laughs> but you know it's, I think that's when we try to put things in a box and I don't think first, personally I don't think any type of music should be put into a box that's why yeah. I'm a music major that doesn't mean I'm a I, I'm not a I, even though I've been doing gospel music since I was pretty much seven years old but yeah. that doesn't mean that I haven't over the years I've I've gain an appreciation for all types of music, you know. Um, and, and, and the sad thing about it, like Sean says, they can't make a living yeah. in, in gospel music. That was, a, that was, that was, that was the defining line because even with the ward singers, and that was very vocal, you know, it was coins that was mm. that, that adversary with a lot of those, Groups, you know what I mean. Uh, I'm trying to think. It was something else. Uh, who was that? Um, they won't come to me. But so many groups have had disputes over money. You know what I mean. And that oh, the, 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 um, during the time of pop got the, the Sweet Chariot Club. You know those groups. A lot of the, a lot of church groups, they were getting butchered by these pastors and. When they when they found out about this pop gospel club, it was people that literally left their they even this people that actually moved from out of state relocated there and hoping to you know go into the club and sing because they didn't try to make some money and yeah and because yeah. they didn't that in, in the in the church and matter of fact they said hey you know you know how can we live and you giving us you know a hundred dollars a week or fifty whatever the you know the the rate was it wasn't feasible. Livable. Virgil Kane is from Manchester, England. Brother, I, we want to we want to know what gospel artists, what gospel music are you listening to over there? In in and um, well, he then wrote a whole uh, session. Oh, I, I don't know what that is. Okay, all right. <laughs> then we got then we got a little bit of a troll. Um, Inspire, let's um let's um time that out, please. Appreciate it. Yo, uh, uh, uh all right. Um let's see, who else did you have on there? You had so many. Um and, and the whole Sam Cook thing, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Sam, it's amazing. He had an amazing journey. Um so the, Sam was so gifted that the church could not confide. No matter, look, Sam, he reached his plateau in, in, in gospel. Like, there was nothing more Sam Cooke could do. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. So in 1957, I mean, it was only the, it was only the, the best thing to do because his music today, like, it's been times that I've probably listened to Sam Cooke's songs, like, um, uh, Change is Gonna Come. And I've been really moved, inspired by that, you know, and that's not on, you know, the Soul Stirs album or anything like that. But yeah, he moved on in 1957 when Secular and Never Turned Back. But, <laughs> but he did give some gospel artists a few, some um, opportunities. Like he actually recorded the Soul Stirs on his label while Ooh. he was still signed to RCA Victor. So yeah, Sam Cooke was amazing. And he was a ladies' man, you know. 
the story no. here, you know, how he, when he was performing, that they would have ambulance taking women to the hospitals. And I'm like, whoa. Ambulance and mops, mopping up. <laughs> huh? I mean, I'm probably scared of that church, you know? But yeah, Speaking Sam Cooke was definitely one of the first pop uh, stars in uh, gospel music, him along with uh, Rosetta Tharp. And Aretha liked the love to some Sam Cooke, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? The story where she said that they could have changed history had it not been for C.L. Franklin. Yeah. You, yeah. you heard that? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let me go ahead and suspend him. All right. I'm sorry. I had to take that one off of Facebook. All right. Yeah. Um, and then Aretha comes along and and she... Hmm. She did the wonderful gospel album of Amazing Grace. That was great. We talked about that a, a, a while ago as well. But, you know, that should kind of give us, and it's like, but I think the world is so hypocritical, especially in the churches where I think we give passes to who can flip-flop in and out of gospel in mainstream. Yeah, they've been doing that for years. Yeah, yeah. It's, and they're called gatekeepers to me. Mm, yeah, yeah. They're going to tell you who who we're going to accept gospel from and who we're not. Um, and I think that's just I think that's just um, I mean, it's humanistic, but I, it's always the legalistic that the legalism that we fall up under. And mm -hmm. I think we get caught up in that legalist legalism of church. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people mm -hmm. miss the point that that gospel music, first of all, music is a universal language. Because if you take the lyrics away from from songs, the melody is what sway you. You know what I mean? It's yeah. what moves you because it's certain, you know, like a lot of the spirituals were written in mind, they're minor, you know, sad, long, you know. Yeah. So yeah. different sounds evoke evoke um different emotions and people miss that with gospel music it's the same way with gospel music as it is with soul music you know it's certain things that they say in these songs that causes these emotions like even when we're at home yeah you know even when we're at church you know and if we would like focus and hone on that aspect of gospel music i think that gospel music not only can be freed but I think that it could reach and bless, you know, people in uh, uh, high places like government fig or figures and, you know, kings and queens, even though they sing because, you know, Mahalia and other, they have sung, but having relationships yeah. with these individuals, you know what I'm saying? You know, the sad part, it, like Jacqueline says about Latusha Scott, Latasha Scott, you know, she, that was from... Um, Homegirl from Inca uh, Escape, you know, she comes out, she has this uh, reality show. So we're already, the world is slighted because we think you done stole money from your sister. And then you come out and you have a gospel album. See, that's when I think that, <laughs> I don't think people gave her any grace. And that's why that album didn't do anything. I just don't, I think that whole timing of that just did, it didn't work out for you, Latusha. And I don't I don't think it has anything to do with her doing secular and then going to gospel. I think that was a whole. I don't think we really trusted her integrity. What's Tasha's? We talking about? She's it from Escape. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's. Uh, uh, let me. Uh, let's see here. I, I don't Who know. can I run to? There you go. Right. Yeah. Let me just see real quick. Uh, and she had she had a um a uh I am Latusha. I keep calling her because Jacqueline keeps calling her Latusha. Her name is Latasha. Latasha. But, but if she spells it weird, yeah, I think that's what it is. Um I am. Yeah, here she go. Uh, da, 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 let me see. My internet's running slow. Here we go. Mm. Let me stop that one and let me share the screen here. There's Latusha. Uh-oh, let me. Um, 
And you know, I don't know. You do remember the whole controversy of this of her? She had she had a she had a um her gospel CD. Where's her gospel CD? Now, when you look at that, you know, interesting. Interesting. There's no gospel CD on it. She's not promoting it. Oh wow. Wow, everyone. This is a, a well. She got it right here for your Grammy nominee for your Grammy consideration. And I don't think, I don't think that happened. Mm -hmm. But she's not even promoting her gospel album anymore. Well, maybe she might come on the show and talk to you about it. I, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> now she does have this uh, Christmas album that she's hawking, um, "Peace, Joy, and Love" with a That's titty current. Mouth. That's current. Uh, that's her. That's yeah. current. Yeah, that's current. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's current. Yeah, yeah. That's By the current. way, Brandy has a great Christmas album. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. they came out like what November. Jess says her album was okay. And you know what, Jess? And I, 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 I feel for her because, like I said, I think we were swayed already with that reality show. Didn't nobody want to listen to her. You know, it's just that's just sad. But we're we're, we're human. She should have waited. She should have really waited and did some kind of reconciliation with her mama and her sister. Or, I mean, with her sister rather. And I think it would have went another way. She tried to manipulate, um, you know, really build up on that um, reality show buzz. But sometimes that don't work for you. Mm -hmm. So you know. that's just, remember Forever Jones. Yes, yeah. They had a TV a star, reality, uh, well, uh, it was only, what, six weeks? Yeah, I didn't even know they had that. Weeks. Yes, it was on Bounce TV. It was oh. actually, it premiered the same year, if I'm not mistaken, as one of David Mann's program, either the some, one of those shows, The Mans or something. The Man. it was like The Mans. okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm available to you as Thompson Community Singers organically, Shanae. I don't think Richard Smallwood had an available to you, did he? No. No, that was the Thompson Community Singers. Um, yeah, that's not Richard. Richard Smallwood just had a wonderful concert for his 75th birthday, though. Yes, he did. It, it was good. Did you watch it? It was really good. Well, they had so much going on that night, so I was, you know. In I know. Night. Well, I watched it the other night. I didn't watch it the night of Carlton's musical. I was, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I didn't even know it was going. I know it, it sucked. Right. When somebody called me. How they die? You can't, you can't orchestrate when somebody dies. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, it is what they had that plan for, for Richard, but I mean, they had to do what they had to do. Yes. There's, uh, there's enough people to attend. Huh? There's enough people to attend. Yeah, that program, enough program, folks program, around program. here. Yeah, donations are mandatory, but definitely appreciated. Cash app, St. James Show, and also, um, where we at? I, I was trying to find yours. I see yours is not pinned to your um, your name there, Mister Maurice. It is Maurice is alive. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, P. J. Morton. P. J. Morton. Mm -hmm. I really like PJ Martin. And it seems like, do we give men more of a pass? Do we do women well, when it comes to dipping of, in and out? First of all, you know, I think that is 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 a lot that, that plays in that. First of all, the talent level, uh, um, not only the talent level, too, it's like uh, PJ Morton, he gives off the vibes. Like, he honestly, he wouldn't care. You know, yeah, like, I don't think we would. Right, 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 right. You know, church folks, you know, they say that they say one thing about them. You know, they're pretty much in bad shape. But PJ, I think he's okay. I think he's a big boy. You know. Yeah. And he's he's up and out some great soul for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God, the Gumbo album. I even enjoy his Christmas album. Yes. Yeah, the Christmas albums. I have them on my Christmas. Playlist, and I think he did like a um, a deluxe or something this year that I just added. Mm -hmm. So yeah, PJ Morton is. But again, if anyone doesn't know who that is, that is Bishop Paul Morton's son mm -hmm. out of Full Gospel Baptist out of uh, New Orleans. PJ mm -hmm. Morton, and he also with uh, what's the group he's with? Oh, um, um, wait, 
who? Bishop Morton? No, PJ Morton. He's with. Uh, what group is he with? I forget that. Who's he with, y'all? Y'all in the chat? Tell us who PJ. You talking Morton. about the band? Yes, a band. What's his name? Oh, it man. escapes me right now. Maroon Five. There you go. Oh, that Jingles guy got it. Maroon Five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Uh, Jingle Jingles guy. Thank you. Yeah, that Jingles guy. <laughs> yeah, Maroon Five. So he ain't, he ain't no more worried about what these folks are saying in the church. No, I, think <laughs> I think that's. I think they just have to once they get. Um, a grip as to who they are, and that's what it's. That's what it. That's what counts. What's your relationship with Christ on your own? Mm -hmm. And not only that, as far as just like the past too. Like, look where we at. I think this reunion tour. I could be wrong, but I'm almost certain that I'm probably right. Mm -hmm. That this reunion tour was the biggest gospel tour of its up uh, to date. I think it was. I mean, flat on fiat everything. Yeah, Be, you know uh, yeah, it, and it took Kirk Franklin to bring out that contemporary look, that real mainstream concert look. Yeah, and yeah. then put those down home gospel people on that yeah. stage. That yeah. mix made it the biggest that yeah. we've had so far. Yeah, and that, that, that I, if you look at a lot of the footage from from the con from the uh, tour, like it's it's time. Right, the, oh, it's so many yeah. ethnicities in there, right? And it's 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 like in Phoenix, like African American, that wasn't the dominant race in that um, in that concert. So uh, I I wonder if some of those artists back in 1963 were alive today. Actually, can I please say this? Yeah. You know, we was getting together for the show, mm -hmm. and um, for some reason, I. I was looking through Facebook uh, for Frank Baylor, because uh, Frank Baylor was uh, one of the ones that recorded, and he went off and uh, started a group called the Gospel Ambassadors. But however, I was looking for Frank Baylor, and then I found out that the man reached out to me. I had a message from him. Oh my goodness! It was in and that the spam folder. Yeah, and guess what? He died two years ago. Oh my goodness! That hurt me so hard. That would have hurt me so hard. I'm like, man, he oh. found out about me some type of way and was reaching out to me, and I didn't get a now chance. Now, tell us who Frank me. Baylor is. Now, Frank Baylor, he's from Philadelphia. He's one of the artists that actually heard about the club and uh, relocated to New York uh, in hopes to, you know, find Atlanta record deals. But the club, it didn't secure employment because it stayed open only six months. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, he changed the name of his group. It was called a Sweet. Sweet Cherry Singers and call them the Gospel Ambassador, uh, but phenomenal, very heavy and, and and dominant voice in gospel music. I think you all will get a kick out of listening to uh, the Gospel Ambassadors. And you know he died because you didn't answer his message. Yeah, I know. No, James, don't, make me, <laughs> don't make me cry, but on that note, I'm gonna take some water. <laughs> I'm just playing, Lord bless the dead. Um, Jacqueline asked a good question. You, did you see about Little Nas X and his gospel or Christian album? Yeah. Well, one of these days, I, you know what, St. James? I think we, we might we might do something. Network, network, network. Because I think it's time to come to 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 gen, to uh, signify and and stop generalizing when it comes to gospel music. We do it all the time with our words. Like we say, we love our dog or we love our car. You don't love your car the same way you love your nappy head son that won't go to school. Right, right, right. You right. just don't do that. You know, and gospel music, everyone wants to put, if it's either if it, they have black faces, if they come out of the black community, if it has this soulful sound, it's gospel music. But that's not true. You're generalizing because gospel blues is the correct terminology for what we call gospel music which emerged mm. in the 1930s because the sanctified church were already doing something that was different from gospel blues gospel blues brought about songs because in the black church before 
gospel music, we were singing hymns. Um, hymns. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, really it's gospel blues. And then you have contemporary gospel, have quartet gospel, alternative gospel. And if we learn how to properly uh, catalyze or uh, uh, categorize, mm -hmm. categorize these, these, these artists, we won't be, our feelings won't be, be hurt all the time, you know, when we see the word gospel. You know what I'm saying? Because so, technically it's not really gospel. There are sub-genres of gospel. So what you're saying is the whole little Nas X is, let's not get, and the thing about it, I think he's saying some inspirational things and he has some lyrics mm -hmm. in there that are more inspirational than, than maybe he's done in the past. So all the church folks are just re ready to say, you know, that's sacrilege. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just ready to really cut him off, and especially because he's some days he says he's gay, and some I don't know. Some days he's not. I don't know what he's doing. But I think in our minds is we already know who we want to hear gospel from or Christian from, and who we don't want to hear from. Like I said before, we're very territorial. But um, yeah. and, and 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 that's an unfortunate uh, situation. You know, I was thinking about something, but go ahead. I was gonna say something. Go ahead. Oh, you missed I, it. I forgot. Jackie <laughs> <I'm getting old. laughs> said, you, "Oh, you use the word God." Yeah, I think it's. I and I think because he said some inspirational things, we want to say because it's more of a hit. Oh my God, Little Nods X is going gospel. Oh, you know that stirs up that stirs up people like. Uh, 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 Bishop Wooten, Wooten, and all oh, yeah. them. You know, it gets them going. Gets them a but sermon you, for the day. Oh yeah, yeah. but you know what? Uh, this is what I, I was going to say. A lot of people look at Caucasians as our enemy. You know, like, we, we need to learn how to take... We need to go colorblind. Like, stop looking at the color and judge the heart. Because the reason why I said that is, is because Billy Graham one of the largest, most known evangelicals of all times, you know, he took Ethel Waters, who had a very successful career in movies, she was an actress, and successful mm -hmm. uh, recording career, and took someone who the black church would have said no, and took her in, and she became one of the voices for his crusade. Andre you know Crouch, too. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, why is it that and then it's just like Mahalia Jackson, James Cleveland, a lot of the the, the, the uh, African American gospel artists. It's like we are putting pressure on each other, opposed to embracing, like we said, right, before, right. you know. And which is pushing our people out to the mainstream, out. away from gospel, black out. gospel, or yeah. gospel blues. It's put, and that's in, and like you said in the beginning of this live, history just repeating itself. Yeah. And it's like, when are we going to buckle down and say, you know what? If you have a good message, I'm going to listen to it, whether it be in or out of gospel. Um, and of course, mm, well, I'm just a little bit liberal than than most. Me you know, too. I just I don't put people, I mean, it's fun to talk about it and fun to judge this and that every now and then. But when the rubber meets the road, I don't care who's in your bed. I don't care, you know, what your relationship with Christ is. Regard, I mean, I, I can't measure it. If you mm -hmm. say you have one, okay, I'm going to believe you. Exactly. Value, mm -hmm. You know, and I can't, even with Latasha Scott, you know, she made that album. I can't tell her, I can't just say that she did it just for the money and mm -hmm. just for the timing of that reality show to try to make that money and everything. But I mean, even in all that, if you listen to some of the songs, mm -hmm. they do hit you a little bit. Yeah. So they you know, do what they're supposed to do. Oh, absolutely they do. I would imagine they do, just like Michelle Williams. You yes. know, during that time, you know, I was working. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I just thought about it. I was working for New Sound Gospel Records and Tapes uh, when she did her second second release. But the first one, um, it was already out when I was working there. But that was so, that was that was hot controversy. You know, and and the thing that gets me is that a lot of people outside of the, like the world, the, the Caucasian world, they wasn't saying anything. It was the church, and yeah. when you when I think about the church, 
Michelle Williams, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, she's from Rockford, Illinois. That's a small city compared to Chicago. So more people knew about Michelle from Destiny Child than the church anyway for mm-hmm. people to be having all this to say because she has a gospel album out. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But she has some good tunes on that first one. Oh, I know that he cares for me. Oh, that mm-hmm. song. I used to have, I used to go to sleep with that song on repeat. Man. Yeah, and it, it's and it's like I say, it's dangerous for us to really pick and choose who we want to hear gospel from because in your deepest, most loneliest, or most depressing hour, it can be a Michelle Williams or a Kelly Price or you know, <coughs> excuse me, or old old school DJ Rogers, you know, <laughs> that will bring you up out of your your stool of do nothing. You know, you know what? Just thank you, Lord, for an email. Let me, I gotta stop because I'm, I'm not no preacher, but, <laughs> but like, um, maybe since I said that, I don't lost the email. Lord, have mercy. Oh, my goodness. Mm-mm. Oh, uh, I think mm-hmm. I was gonna say something about like basically, if we just if we look at music without, if we look, I think I said it before, but I'll say it again, just take the lyrics away from the music. You know what I'm saying? And then what would you call it? Like, would it still be gospel? Right. Or put any other name on it. So right. we need to really have that type of thinking when we think about God. Like, we don't, like you said, we no, no one really owns the music. The music is a gift. Like mm-hmm. God, we go through things to give us the, the, the meat or the message for the song. And like, once we distribute it out to the world, that's no longer what well, we can take, we can glean from it, you know, because there's been times that I have yeah. uh, mm-hmm. listened to lyrics from my song that has encouraged me, you know, songs that I have composed, you know, so. So you're a songwriter as well. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I have a whole album out. <clears throat> you got a whole album. What's it on? I, where's it at? Uh, it's everywhere. Um, YouTube, uh, iTunes, Spotify. What you say? We need yeah. to find that and put that in the chat. This was the best year for me. Uh, I got the the yearly wrap. I think I was right at about sixty something thousand streams this year. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And it, it is it a self entitled album? Uh, it's entitled "Songs from the Heart." Y'all better oh, go yeah. get that. <laughs> Song from the Heart, Eric Maurice Clark, y'all. Y'all go download that bad boy. <laughs> Right there, right there. Take a screenshot so y'all can get it when you get offline, all right? Song from the heart. Uh Uh-oh, I had some lighting and it went away. Oh, that's because of my screen. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm going to, oh, let me let me hit download right now while I'm doing it. Now you have one more uh, stream, okay? Oh, okay, okay, okay. (laughs) You get one more penny. You're so you're so so generous. I appreciate it. <laughs> so courteous. Oh man, you Candace uh, says you cannot box in music. I have such a wide range of music that gets me through moments in life, good and bad. Let me tell you, I have a playlist, y'all, that has gospel, that has R and B, that has classical. I mean, I have a playlist that just kind of hits every aspect, and then I have different playlists with just this just that, you know, mm-hmm. types of thing. So if you're going to be over here at the St. James show, I can't have you hung up on on isms and, and, and tripping about where the message is coming from because the message, what they say, God can use a donkey. That's what they, mm-hmm. don't they love to hear that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, a child, please talk about records and tapes. How old are you, Marie? We don't record in tapes. Uh, uh, I look that uh, young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a record and tape bash over yeah, here. New Sound Gospel records and tape. Well, they're old, they're <laughs> opened in the seventies. Still, he's still alive. Lee Johnson, shout out, shouts out to you, Lee Johnson. Reverend. Mm-hmm. What's up, Tasha? Yeah. So, um, who else did we have on that thumbnail? Let's see. I just wanted to see. Um, who else did we have? Let's see. We talked about Ricky Dillon. Uh, and Ted Wynn. Let's talk about Ted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, t- that's what I was going to say. So, th- now, I could be wrong, but this is how I'm feeling his vibes. You know, like, in my life, personally, like, I've been to, you know, uh, cabarets and 
different uh -huh. uh, live sets and things of that sort. And like you find yourself singing, you know, and you have a little drink and you, you, you feeling good and things of that sort. Uh -huh. And I think with Ted, like he had sang, he sang gospel for so long and he probably go to the club. He, he's a music aficionado, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so he right. loved music. Right. So he probably was like, he reached that point. He's like, I don't care what they say. Like, I'm singing it anyway. And like, right. you can't tell me Ted when they've been singing on secular music before. Oh, he... definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just yeah. like, the hell with it. And, you know, so. And he and just did something it. with Tweet. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. He just yeah. did something with Tweet. And his, um, and I love his um, actual um, holiday record that he just released. Really, mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, holiday Love. Yeah, and it's not derogative music either. Like no, that's great, no. and his uh, secular is not derogative. It's, it's nice, good music. It's just it's cool. It's easy listening music, soulful music. What was his uh, gospel thing with Sherry? What was his uh, group? Uh, Ted, Sherry, and Sherry. Ted and Sherry. Ted and Sherry. That's what speaking it was. of them. Um, you all should check out uh, one of their latest uh, singles. Is uh, "You've Been So Faithful," written by uh, uh, Eddie James. Oh man, they put some harmonies like no. Now other. you pay a damn what you done for me. That yeah, one? yeah. Okay. They oh, they released that one out again. Yep, yeah, it was. Uh, that's it right there. That that one there. Well, this one right the, here. Uh, yeah, that's it right there. Oh wow! They put pray for on there. That's a beautiful. Ooh, that's beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna have to download that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. 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 Can nobody still sing? Sing? Uh, encourage yourself, like Sherry, boy. I tell you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but see, Ted has always been kind of Forward. out there. Yeah. Forward. Yeah, he's never boxed himself in at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. mm. he came on the scene with dreadlocks in the '90s. Although we look at we don't we don't make fuss out about it now because we're accustomed to it. But that was a big thing. Mm -hmm, gospel mm -hmm. artist, young gospel artist, who do you think he is? With dreadlocks? <laughs> right, right, right. They ask you, are you related to the Clark sisters? <laughs> yeah. Are you? No, nah, no. Nah. He's not, y'all. He can't not even Moret. It, He ain't uh, J. Drew Sheard, lost son. No. Nah, nah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tweet is so underrated. I love Tweet. There goes my head and on my head. Oh now, my she head. gives church runs. You know that song? She like, really yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, taxi, taxi, take me. Oh, my God. Oh, right. yeah. that's that, that was Sherry, too. Come ye. This, uh, this, yeah, constantly. Yeah, I can never figure that word this out. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a whole <laughs> song of the church. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Man, oh, but uh, Mitty Carter too. We, I think her, her picture is on there too. Who's that? Mitty Collier. Yeah, talk about her. What's her name? Um, say the name again. Reverend Mitty Collier. Yeah, and I started researching her. She was a reverend, but but she didn't yeah. start off no reverend. No, but she started off. She she was raised in the church. You 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 heard of Father Charles C. Hayes, right? Yeah. I should have sent you the picture. When she was a teenager, they were they were raised in Alabama together. They oh, said really? as teenagers. They came to Chicago. Um, she made it big in the secular field, but the song that she made it big on, guess who led that song with James Cleveland? Stephanie Mills. I had oh, a wow. talk with God last night. So um, Pastor Mitchie Collier, she was in the studio and one of the uh, engineers, they had they put the record on, uh, you know, Lawrence Flowers and and um, uh, Lawrence Roberts and, and James Cleveland. And they heard the song. And the next thing she knew, the next morning, they said they had a song for it. It was a, a, a secular version of I Had a Talk With God Last Night. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that that created some heat. Now, another thing, too, uh, Minty Collier, Ricky Diller, you know that song, I never thought of it like this, too. You know that song, Who Can I Run To, that escape? Who can yeah. I run? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Ricky Diller recorded that song. Right. I remember that. Her, the lead vocalist on that song is Minty Collier's daughter. Really? Yeah, that's her daughter. Wow. She's a, she sings for New Jean. Shout out to EJ and, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, My but she, she's big. She's really big. I kid you not. 
God has really afforded me some great opportunities. I can't remember when it was, probably two years ago. Uh, she she wanted me to accompany her uh, to Arkansas. She had to be a special guest at uh, Azale's uh, birthday celebration. He's uh, the assistant for um, Bobby Jones. Mm -hmm. So we went out there. I kid you not. It was so refreshing to see this. Like when the service was over with and she was walking, she was leaving. I mean, people was just flashing photos. Wow. Everybody wanted to wow. take a photo. Everybody wanted autographs. And she's in her 80s. And that was just, it was a beautiful sight to see people still embrace her like that. Because mm. she that is, is a star. Yeah. She's and that star. and that's Mitzi Col Col Mitty Collier. Mitty Collier. Yeah, mm. yeah. She um, she 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 charted with a song too called uh, "I'll sh uh, Share You." I believe it's called "Share." And then she did gospel artists. Matter of fact, in the eighties, if you look on YouTube, um, right at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, where uh, Roberta Martin was the pianist for years, she died there. Um, James Cleveland had the GMWA, the Chicago chapter choir there, and they recorded. Now, prior to the recording, James had did a trip down memory lane. So many people was there, beautiful. Thomas Dorsey was there with Clayton Hannah was with his nurse. Anyway, um, they had an all-star. So they had the Barrett sisters, uh, Clyde Brown, uh, uh, the Caravans, and Pastor Mitty Collier. So uh, Dayton says recording. Gladys Knight was her best friend? Huh? That's what they well, that's, they, they, they being funny because uh, James took Gladys. <laughs> but, oh. this time, but this time, this time, um, uh, Minty took James. So I, I get what they're trying to say. <laughs> oh, they being messy. Yeah, you know, we're not messy. We not messy over here at the St. James show, y'all. We don't do mess. All right. No, I, I know St. Uh, James is watching. Oh, messy ass. We don't do mess, y'all. But yeah, they, that was. I think they were trying to. They were. They were insinuating. I, I guess. <laughs> but I, we ain't gonna talk about that because um, that's old Let's news. Let's talk about this. Let's get into this real quick here. Um, let's see. Uh oh. Ain't that something? So we have the drag queens in the club mm -hmm. doing drag shows off of gospel. You know, but they can't do nothing about that because they they have financial backing. You know, they they you know one organization that people are reluctant to mess with, and that's I hope I don't get these uh, abbreviate these uh, letters. Was it LG LGBTQIA? Plus, exactly. You don't mess with that community, right? You don't mess with that community because they're vocal. They they're not. Yeah. You know how a lot of people in the black church they're gonna keep their mouth closed and they're gonna right. pay attention to the leader of the church. Nah, because the baton in Chicago been going for years. It's called the baton. Baton doing dra uh, gospel drag. I mean, gospel brunches and. Uh, yeah. gospel songs and they always and intertwine gospel music yeah. and it, my my cousin was a drag queen back in the 70s and 80s and he used to tell me uh, uh well i think it was the 80s i don't know but he used to tell me it, it, in the bay area you know in oakland san francisco you know they would do changed tremaine mm -hmm. changed mm -hmm. and the thing about it he said every time they did it he said what Pack of sissies just just crying mm -hmm. and caring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They just he said the sissies everywhere just cry because I don't care where you do gospel, mm -hmm. gospel hits. Yeah, it does. And that's why it's like, regardless if you think you know drag queens or transsexuals or whoever, 
should do it. It's still the message getting out to the, the uttermost parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and did you see that crowd? That that crowd, they, they're not making mockery of them. You can tell people it. Exactly. You can tell. Yeah. Mm, it's very, yeah. it's, it's, the evidence is there, you know? And I, I love it too. Now think about Mahalia Jackson now. She probably, she probably not, she probably would have had a heart attack if she would have saw that. Right. Oh, no, she would have been, been gone. She would have gone. She would have passed away. Would, uh -uh, that would have took her out of here. Yeah. That there? Yeah. yeah. Oof. And then yeah. now, even going into now, I remember Lillian Lloyd put up when they were doing her songs in the club. They're still doing shots out to Sapphire Blue. I'm going to uh, uh, definitely share this with, with her. She is a Chicago icon. Really? Okay. She, she, her name is Sapphire Blue. She only performs gospel numbers. Mm. And even when the... Um, when the um, pandemic hit, uh, you know, a lot of people were going doing a lot of entertainment via Facebook Live. Yes. And she actually, she took her show right on live. So shots out. Uh, much love to you, Sapphire Blue. Thank you for, you know, inspiring with gospel and uh, going against the grain in the clubs, you know. And she's she's definitely, definitely a legend. Her, um, uh, uh, Otis Mack and Ruff and stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about Sylvester. Oh, yeah. You know, we had Sylvester, who was a great organist, right? Mm -hmm. Singer mm -hmm. in the church, Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, did all he can do in the church mm -hmm. until he was like, okay, we've used you up, Sylvester. Bye. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. went on and, and, and did better things. Let's talk about him. You know, I like to put it like this. Sylvester, when I was younger, I remember, I don't know, was it a TV show or did I, it, I don't know. I know it was on TV and it was uh, kind of uh, surrounding Michael Jackson's life. And it, it, it showed footage of him overseas. And to see people faint and, right. and just, I mean, they literally had Emily outside of his concerts because you never knew what was going to happen. Mm. You know, to see that going on with, with Michael Jackson and we were talking about Sylvester. Sylvester, <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna be real. Yeah. I, so um, to see all that going on with um, with Sylvester, I forgot. I, I forgot my thought. You gotta come. We gotta come back to this. I'm sorry. But no, it, it's just it, it's just crazy. Like I say, in Sylvester, he had affiliation, of course, in the Bay Area with mm -hmm. the Hawkins. He went to Love Center. He, you know. I think Love Center was where he was buried, right? Where, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they really embraced him there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went after, let me tell you this. After I met, I've always had my theology growing up apostolic, growing up Pentecostal. But after I actually met Walter Hawkins and Edward Hawkins, and it was 2009. The life changing experience. Oh. I was, my life changed. Yeah. Because I was like, first of all, these people are the nicest people I have met. Yeah. And they're the, 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 the most talented people that I grew up on listening. And, and, but, and I just understood the hearts of them. Mm -hmm. And once I understood the hearts of them and how they associated music with love, mm -hmm. music with, um, making everybody feel wanted, and that's mm -hmm. through music. It was a game changer for me. You know, um, they say Bishop Carlton Pearson uh, brought to the forefront the the, the gospel of inclusion. Uh -huh. I think that the Hawkins brought to the forefront the gospel music version of inclusion. Oh, because they did, they did not. Yeah, you know, I think I I think the Holy Spirit gave me that. I right think there. he just dropped that, that just down in me. your spirit. I think he, a little nugget he gave you real quick, like, thank you, Holy, oh, thank you, kind spirit. Thank you, thank you. Oh, well, yes, sir. But that ain't nothing but the truth. I mean, the Hawkins, oh, I say, 
the Hawkins brought in the gospel music of inclusion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, we're going to have to coin that. You better coin it real quick. Get on that copy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll upset some folk around here. We start talking about that. But they really did. Think about Edwin. You know, when I talked to Lynette Hawkins Stevens, I loved her, studied her, but didn't mm -hmm. study her personality and a lot of the things that they went through as a family. Yeah. Uh -huh. All of them are very vocal about it. So they went through. They know? went through. And we and thought we went through. They they went through. They went through. They went and they're vocal about it. And put a pin there. I remember what I was gonna say. So about uh, Michael Jackson. So you know how people was falling out with Michael Jackson? Right. So with Sylvester, I feel the same way with Sylvester. You know, people, because I've heard stories, they're like, oh, when I saw Sylvester, I just fainted. Or, oh, I really wanted to meet Sylvester. Or Sylvester was my life. Like, when Sylvester died, ain't no telling how many people died of a broken heart. Sylvester yes. touched lives. She, yeah. He changed lives. He encouraged people. Hey, just because I'm different or... Uh, you know, I, I express myself different from, you know, the normal. Hey, I, I'm still somebody. I'm important. And that's what Sylvester preached. You know, like his version of you are my friend. I think, I mean, no no offense to uh, taking Eddie. nothing from Patti LaBelle, but yeah, yeah, when yeah. I think of that song, I think of Sylvester. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And I, I, I didn't really know until I, my cousin came around. You know, he was in the scene. He was, you know, Mr. Gay of his city and everything else. And who Sylvester was. And he brought mm -hmm. light to me about Sylvester. And then I remember hearing, he's always played You Are My Friend from Patty. And then mm -hmm. one day I said, who is this singing it though? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it does something. Yeah. It does something. Yeah. And it, I think that I, it gives, it gives a, um, a personal touch to his story, yeah. to his life, because like when they play it at the end of the documentary, when you know they let people know that he died from you know complications right. of AIDS, you know yeah. that song, mm. it's like it's it's a uh, it's a Leah song, it's an like agent that that kind of heals or it, it it belongs there, you know, in a sense, it belongs there, you know, it belongs there in regards to Sylvester. If you guys have, have never through. heard his version of "You Are My Friend," look that thing up on YouTube. Yeah, where you out? It 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 it'll put it'll get you there. Yeah, it will. It will. If you got a heart, now if you're a cold-hearted snake, <laughs> like what's her name said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So, mm, man, I'm still I'm still basking in your revelation on the Hawkins. Yeah, that took me out. I, I, <laughs> Wow, you you know what? You got to repost that, and we're gonna have to definitely capitalize uh, uh, cap yeah. capitalize on it because uh, I know a lot of people when they hear that, they're gonna be like, "That is the truth." Because when you think about it, I'm telling you, Edwin Hawkins, all that whole contemporary era, they preached love. They did. They did. Uh, love alive. I I asked her obvious. I asked Lynette Hawkins Stevens the obvious. I said, "What do you think was the message?" Behind, in so many words, what was the message behind Love Alive? Love. Mm. Love, you know, because they have been neglected of it. They've been deprived of it. Yeah. You know, and it's amazing. You know, a lot of times. And being the in the world, church the whole life, deprived yeah, of love. But go ahead. Yeah, the whole world can embrace you, but it's a select group of people that really touch your heart. And no matter all these people loving on you, but when you, when, the people that are really close to your heart, when they break your heart, oh, that's a that's a that's a cut. That 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 is a cut that you can't even you know. Yeah, uh, Tom Trip is vocal about that too. A lot of contemporary artists are vocal because I came from the, the the Apostolic Church. They wouldn't let him sing because he wore bright a, a dreadlocks. He got yeah. up out of that and look where he is now. The yeah. same people that pushed him. The, the people that put the people that reject him, they pushed him to his greatness. The people that reject him pushed him into his 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 financial stability. Uh, right, right. You know, Why they still suffering? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? I'm gonna say this, and I don't mm -hmm. know why I'm going to, but Bishop Noel Jones, he's my favorite preacher. 
Mm-hmm. And I know I'm probably mess up the story, but he gives a story. He says, sometimes God will use your enemies to bless you. He said, it was a lady. She had needed some, some bread and some eggs or something. She was making something and she was crying, Lord, I need some bread. Lord, I need some eggs. Lord, I need some bread. Lord, 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 Lord. But then around around town, there's two nep- uh, knuckleheads. They like, um, this woman, she always, she, she melodramatic. So they were like, we're going to go to the store, we're going to buy some bread, some eggs, we're going to go put it on her door and knock on her door and run and hide mm-hmm. in the bushes and see what she do. So they did that. She opened the door. She like, oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God, for my egg. And they laughing, but, all, but they didn't realize that they're laughing, but God used them to bring her what she asked for. Mm, mm, you know? Mm. And it happens a lot. A lot of times our blessings don't come from the people that we think it's going to come from. It come from total strangers. It I have I have been gifted large sums of money by people that I have never seen. They didn't want to give me their name. You know what, what comes from when you give from the heart or when you do things from the heart. You don't worry about your name being on anything, right? Because right, you on assignment. That's right. And I think that that's what we all need to realize that you know whatever it is that we're doing in life, the talent. We are on assignment. We were created with a gift for a reason. It's an assignment. And we need to stop talking of and taking from one another because what I have and what you have, we collectively can get our assignment done. You know, there's no I in team. I know that's a cliche, but it's a fact. At, mm-hmm. at each year in life, I learn that more. And once you get a singer, you really know that because there's going to be a lot of things that you're not going to be able to do for yourself and you're going to need people. So you have to build a team. You have to build a community of people. You know what it says that men will give into your bosom Mm -hmm. and it doesn't always mean finances. I mean, men are going to give you that encouragement. Men are going to give you financial because God has appointed the, the certain particular man or woman to bless you and be a blessing in your life, bringing it back to what we're talking about, about this gospel thing. Mm -hmm. Let's keep our hearts open and our consciousness open to how God will allow different singers and minstrels to bless your life. Yes. Not the ones that we think we think that only Shirley Caesar has the mantle to sing gospel to you and for you to feel it. Yeah. No, it might be a Michelle Williams. It might be a Kelly Price. It might be a tweet. You know, we don't know. It might be, you know, somebody, even when we start talking about, um, who was it? One guy, you know, like Mario, Mario Winans, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, he's written so many songs and that's Vicky Winans son. Mm-hmm. You know, he's written secular songs. Majority, I guess were secular songs, but mm-hmm. I remember in an interview he did, he was like, but my first love is gospel mm-hmm. music, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? So we cannot hang ourselves up on how God is going to use whoever he's going to use to impact your life. That's facts. Everybody, please, if you don't mind, if you have not already, we want you to make sure that you like and that you, thank you for commenting in the chat, subscribe to both this channel and Eric's, share, join. You can join the St. James Show and it is, the link is pinned to the chat. So you want to make sure. So uh, Gospel Diaries, let me tell you, I really, that's Gospel Diaries is what um, Eric's channel is, Eric Maurice Clark. Um, there's his cash app, Maurice is Alive. Feel free to support him. He's doing a great work over at Gospel Diary. I really enjoy the Calvin Bridges interview. Oh, wow. I didn't know, I remember Calvin Bridges, but I didn't know he was doing what he was doing internationally. Yeah, yeah. See, the Hawkins, they opened the opened the doors for a lot of people. You know, the Hawkins, even though you don't want to bank off of just one song, mm-hmm. but they they gave us a repertoire 
of one would, would, consisting of one song that could just take us across the take world, you all around the world, all all, yeah. all all around the world. Yeah, you know, and um, that's just where we are. But the Hawkins, you know, they just really opened up so many avenues, you know, yeah. for the oncoming uh, different styles or different interpretations of gospel music, like especially on coming like in the um in the 80s because you have people like commission yeah they, they debut what type of you know there was no sound like that in gospel music before oh before. absolutely not and they were my they were my secondary idols me and my friends <laughs> thought we were all commissioned of course they, of course they you know they all told i was fred <laughs> up y'all <laughs> but Man, I mean, we love commission. And like you said, opening the doors for commission. That was a whole new sound that we just, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Them, the whinings. The whinings, whining yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so many that Kirk Carr was introduced in the 80s. Yeah. You know, like 87. And he gave us, now, now, now that's debatable. That's the, Kirk Carr is debatable to me because. To say pop gospel, have he really went pop gospel? I think he has crossed over. I really you know, there are a couple of songs that yeah. they they would consider as yeah. I, I think he is yeah. I, I, I think he's a mainstream. I think he's mainstream. <laughs> Hopefully he is because he's he's a hell of a heart. He's he's good at what he do. Stop! I'm definitely Fred. Up yours. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh oh, Sean said his, uh, uh, her grandfather is a commission founder and writer. Okay, they're referring to you. Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but no, she said Sean is saying her grandfather is a commission uh, founder and writer. Commission. Oh, I, I yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Commission founder and writer. Detroit, Detroit. Wow. It, every there's some good there's some goodness that comes out of Detroit. Oh yeah. Oh, We're yeah. gonna touch on that pretty soon. This Detroit is full. Of stuff mm -hmm. up in there, yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, man, I you know we've we've talked tonight. I mean, I don't want to keep belab belaboring the you know the <laughs> night because we got things to do. But I appreciate you coming on and talking about um, this whole you know in and out of gospel. I'm going mainstream. I'm coming back the uh, the the gospel. Then I'm leaving gospel to go to mainstream. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh, Michael Brooks is your. I know Michael Brooks. That's your grandfather, girl. Oh really? Oh okay. Mike okay. came. He was Mike came in the new, the new group. Like with Marvin, when Marvin came, right? Marvin said. I thought Michael, Michael Brooks, Brooks was like a founding member. Oh it, right, okay. So, yeah, no, he was found. It, uh, Marvin. Yeah. Who left? Who left that break? Brought Marvin. What Fred left? That brought Sweat, Marvin. Not Keith Sweat. Keith Staten left. Keith Staten. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Keith Staten had left, but remember he came back. In 2000, remember they did that two discs. The yeah, mm -hmm. they came on that. All of them was that Marcus Cole, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Man, well, thank you, Red Man. Said you both enjoy both of us. We are we we are grateful. We are grateful. Um, before you guys get out of here, please make sure that you are going to Gospel Diaries here on um, the great YouTube. And making sure that you are subscribed to Eric Maurice Clark's um, show. Are you getting you're getting some more subscribers over there? I hope, uh, Mr. Oh, Eric. absolutely. Yeah. They said they they said they love your uh, interview with Carlton Pearson. Oh yeah, they love that. Thank you, Inspire. Yep. Hey, Inspire. Yeah. <laughs> Great interview, and. Uh, and if you definitely if you want to support this channel, of course, you can do, do a Duzel. They coming to get you over there? No, nah, thank God. Not this time. <laughs> and that's not the Popo either. That was a fire truck. The Popo. The Popo. No, there's Zell. Right. And if you that's want to send me a uh, email, there's my email address also. I love to get emails from you guys. And also here, once again, is Gospel Diaries. And there is Maurice is alive. If you would like to support him financially, Maurice be going everywhere, y'all. He needs some gas money, plane money, and everything else. 
he goes everywhere and sits with these artists. So he definitely uh, can use your support. But thank you so much, uh, everybody. We are going to get out of here. Any final words, uh, Eric? Let's embrace one another. And I want I want y'all to flood St. James in the comment right now. I want everybody to say, I love you, St. James. <laughs> oh, we are oh, you're so kind. Oh, I so want kind. like 50 comments to say I appreciate you, St. James. But they won't, they're not gonna put that, they won't even hit like most of them. <laughs> really? It might change. They just come over here and they just come over here and, and, and listen. You know how they do. That's the yeah, you know. They say Chicago supports Eric. They love you in, in Chicago, Eric. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah, I'm glad I'm feeling better too. I mean, I didn't have too much. I didn't have too much either. Oh, I was I was a wretch undone last night, y'all. I wasn't gonna make it if I came on live last night. I was half dead, and I didn't bail out. I didn't bail out till later. I said, "Oh, Eric, I can't do it." Yeah, I tried to sleep it off, and that didn't work. Yeah, that didn't yeah. work. Yeah, but in so. God's own time. In his own time, that's all That's all we can do. That's all we can say. But thank you, everybody. We are getting out of here. We appreciate you. Appreciate your uh, support. Evening, all right? Let's get out of here with a Carlton Pearson medley. Y'all have a good night.